Jump ahead to 125 here where these guys are going to get after it. Spencer Lee, the returning national champion. It's Sebastian Rivera who has a win against Lee earlier in the year at the Midlands Tournament. Here we go. The number one ranked Sebastian Rivera going up against the defending NCAA champion. The first true freshman in 20 years to win at 125, Spencer Lee from Iowa. Here's how they got here. Rivera taking his number one seed and sliding to the finals. And Lee with an impressive win over Russell, 8-0 in the semis. And they're matched up for the first time since December when Rivera beat Lee in the Midlands Championship. Lee did not wrestle in the dual meet between Northwestern and Iowa, so everyone in the wrestling world has been waiting for this rematch. A good look there at Spencer Lee. What a year he had last year as a true freshman, you know, coming out of red shirt in January. Yeah, and four falls in the NCAA tournament plus a major. And he's just a, a tech fall as well, so he, he's uh, really been the guy to go here. This is going to be an interesting match because... You know, Rivera was able to keep the, this match in space the last time that they wrestled. A lot of lateral motion, able to keep Lee from getting comfortable in his tie-ups. And at the same time when Lee would pursue to get those ties, he was able to drop in on the shot. Look for Lee to kind of cut the ring off just like a, a boxer would to kind of get into his ties and work the head a little bit. Get to two-on-ones and get to his shots. Spencer Lee out of Murraysville, Pennsylvania, Franklin, Franklin Regional High School, a three-time state champion. Like we said, NCAA champ last year as a true freshman, two-time junior world champion, cadet champion. He is seasoned beyond his years, and he's made a big impact on this Iowa program. As you can see already, Lee does not like to operate. He takes a deep shot right there. He's able to come out the back door here. We'll see if Rivera's got that lock in the crotch there, see if he's able to go ahead and... He's able to go ahead and turn back in. It looks like he's going to be in a good position to do that. Trying to do an ankle pass right now is Rivera. Sees elbow deep around that. Try to take the uh, initiative. The referee's been calling this a stalemate relatively quickly. And the yep. stalemate is called. They'll go back to the center on their feet. Yep. Actually, a potentially dangerous call. Good call there by the official. Rivera, New Jersey prep. The first two weight classes are Pennsylvania versus New Jersey preps. Thanks, thanks. Already this match is a little bit more tight, you know, as far as their space goes. Oh, Rivera able to go ahead and get to that shot. He likes to drift one direction or the other and hit those low shots at the ankle, and he had a lot of success. He took Lee down three times in that match in the Midlands Finals. All with different techniques. Rivera, the first recruit for interim head coach, uh, Matt Stor Storniolo, when he got the head job and Rivera was his first recruit and he was somewhat off the radar, but he was recruiting a great attitude according to the coach. We saw Rivera's fearless earlier. He stepped up to wrestle uh, Stevan Micic uh, at 133, the two number one ranked wrestlers in the nation at 125 and 133. Micic was able to win that in, uh, you know, with, with pretty ease, but it was a, a, a great statement by Rivera that he's just looking to get better and looking to be challenged. You know, every season, Tim, win national championships, it doesn't get easier. Nice little, little head pick right there. Collar tie going really hard, trying to hit that uh, ankle pick there on Lee on that lead leg. You can see the quickness that Rivera possesses. Question Very for dangerous. you. Yeah. Um, you'd say at the end of the first period, if you went 0-0 with Lee, you'd be your advantage. But from a Rivera standpoint, having taken him down uh, several times in the first period last time, what do you think right here? I think you're exactly right. I think it's an advantage here for Lee, you know, to be able to go ahead and go neutral in that first period. That sounds funny to say that, so it's just a great question. So here you've got Rivera. He's trying to go ahead and... and He's got to go ahead and take a little riding time down because Lee is so tough in the top position. You just don't want to turn this into a four-minute riding match. A quick escape here would really be advantage for Lee. Nice 
job of Rivera by following, but he doesn't, he doesn't have his grip high enough to get a decent mat return. Drops in on the leg. Lee coming hard with that wizard. He gets the escape. And then 25 seconds of a ride for Rivera. Lee on uh, his feet. They're neutral, and it's 1-0. Spencer Lee, the defending NCAA champion, true freshman last year, came out of red shirt in the middle of the season, was recovering from ACL uh, surgery, and uh, took his brace off in the NCAA finals and beat Nick Suriano in the finals, who we'll see next at 133. Suriano from Rutgers moving up to 133. Really important part of this match here for Rivera. Now that he's given up the escape and only has 25 seconds of riding time, it's really incumbent on him to get something working on the feet because if he gets, he's able to get a takedown, which he's, doesn't look like he's going to with the hands locked right there around the waist. A good mat return gets it. Things going Spencer Lee's way right now for the Hawkeyes. Out front 3-0 with that takedown. Well, I think he'll look back at this match and say, that was my opportunity to be aggressive and, and, and go down with my shot as opposed to waiting for Lee to go ahead and get on the advantage right there. And Lee, being the champion, senses that little strength that he had right there at the end and kind of powered in and got around behind and good mat returns, they go off. So Lee, very good in the top position. Let's take a look at this takedown. Just a little snap down, underhook, a little duck under right there, a little front trip action maybe. Yep, comes up, lifts up with the hips. Set. Good mat return. Hang on a second, stop. Really in control. Time right? Lee coming on yeah, to he went uh, down. He the that top. They're going to look at the uh, yeah, riding he time. Was, he was down. He to started sure down, so we correct. had to give up some. Set. Red cover. Set. Now, Rivera was able to get out in the last match, but that's a little bit different animal here now when Lee wants to be in the top position. So strong up there. Latches on, and from a strategic standpoint and with the score, it's all been Spencer Lee to this point. You know how the coaches there are recruiting earlier and earlier, wrestlers are being watched from the time they're small. Tom Brand says he has been impressed with Spencer Lee since he was 110 pounds, been watching him for a long time, and he says he has made a big impact with his humble example as a team leader, and he's only a sophomore. Well, I think he said it you know, perfectly there, Tim, is that his, his presence last year on his path to winning NCAA titles Remember, he got beat in the Big Ten championships in the semis. So he, he, he just has that maturity that you just wouldn't expect out of a guy that's a, a, a freshman, but he's done a lot of winning at the lower, uh, on the freestyle circuit. Of course, three-time state champion in high school. Just has all the tools. Spencer Lee was third in the Big Tens last year before he won the NCAAs. Nathan Tomasello, the graduated senior, four-time All-American national champion. Nathan Tomasello was last year's champion for the Ohio State Buckeyes. Look where he's got that wrist, Tim, that left, left wrist of uh, Rivera up there high. He's got the wrist now behind the back. Rivera able to pop to his feet. And to get the escape, so 3-1 score. Riding time at 118, so Rivera really has to get on his office it's now. Well, you just said it because Spencer Lee caught him not being on his offense earlier, created his own with that uh, duck under and the drive, and the key to Rivera is staying on his offense and wrestling his match. The part of tournament wrestling, Tim, is no winning when you're out of it, not waiting for the last 20 seconds of the third period. Recognize the strategy's not going your way. Stall warning on Lee in that instance. Good shoot. Good job of shooting off a Lee off the map by Rivera, but he needs to get a takedown and a ride out here. He needs, needs to do it fast. Working hard with that double underhook. If he can get the stall warning here, that could assist him here. Good job of Lee holding him off. Now they threw the, uh, the brick. That's uh, Jimmy Kennedy is uh, the initiator, the assistant coach there of the brick. Now they're looking for the hands to the face call, and I think that's pretty wise of the Northwestern Western, uh, coaching staff there. Hands to the face call. It is or it isn't. Yeah, yeah. The, basically would eliminate riding time at that point. See if we can find it on our replay. Right here, oh, clearly in that triangle. Wouldn't be surprised to be that 
see that call. And there's no warning. It's a, If they decide to call hands to the face, it'll be one, and you're right then. That takes away the need. Yeah, no question about it. The need for um, the, the, to take care of that riding time, because that riding time right now is almost as good as Lee's. Unless uh, the takedown could happen in the next five seconds. A minute 18 riding time uh, for Spencer Lee night right now with 23 seconds left in regulation. Matt Sorczynski, the uh, official, and Mike McCormick both taking a look at it. It's been called and that one is point. Hands to the face. Pretty obvious call at that point. That has been a point of emphasis as we talk about almost every match. But uh, what that was was a darn good job out of the northwestern corner of seeing that and throwing that brick immediately. Now it gives Rivera an opportunity to, with a, a takedown and a ride out basically to tie the match. Hands to the face. Tough duty as well against the national champion. And here we go, 23 seconds left, or 30 seconds. They put 30 seconds on the board, and Rivera in on the single leg. Look at those hips, though. Lee is able to hold him off. Going right into the wizard. Gets to the far ankle. That's got to be close. Yes. Gets to two. 15 seconds left on the edge of the mat. He's got to stay on the leg here. That would be his best, ad my best advice here for him. You start getting the count, count you can go ahead and move him off. If he hangs on here, we'll go to overtime because Lee has riding time. Yep. And Rivera thinks he's won the match right. right now. Yep. So here we go. Sudden victory. One minute on the clock. Any score wins. There's been a stalling call on Lee. So whatever kind of point. Watch this. Right there, right back at you. Could be a hands to the face. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> and a line drive. <laughs> Holy crap. And you see Mike McCormick and uh, who's the side judge, number 24, Matt Sorenchinski. He's uh, taking a good look at that. And we talked. Any score right here would win the match. So if they do call this a hands to the face, Spencer Lee would be the champion. Take another look. Let's see it again. Uh, I think it's, I think it's, it's, up, on the, it's up above. Yeah, unless there's something else that we haven't seen. Yeah, not in that triangle of eyes and nose. No, we don't know that for sure. Let's see what the call is. The head coach of Northwestern on the sidelines as his assistant coach Jim Kennedy got his call, but the Iowa coaching staff did not get theirs. You saw the difference from where the hand landed. Well, let's look, look for that lateral quickness here. Well, Rivera, is he able to go ahead? And, and this good job by Lee tying him up here. He wants to break free, Rivera does. Looking for that step in. Now is an opportunity to get a little bit of angle here. Both guys scrapping pretty hard. Lee back in on a shot. Plenty of time for both of these guys to score. Shot there by Lee. He's got his head down. Wrinkle in the back of the neck. Good job by Rivera. Coming back to a double. He gets it. Wonderful scramble by those two men. Lee had a shot, almost dead to rights. Had the wrinkle in the back of his neck. And somehow, Rivera pulls a left-handed underhook and drives him through and scores at the edge of the mat. Impressive win. The sophomore, Rivera from Northwestern. Ready for 133. Can Nick Suriano get his first Big Ten championship? Will they have to go through Luke Pletcher? Luke Pletcher received a medical uh, uh, forfeit from top seeds Stevan Micic to get into the finals. Suriano beat DeSanto from Iowa to make his way there. Should be a really good one, Jim.
Yeah, and of course, uh, Luke Pletcher also had an exciting semifinal round match here with uh, Roman Bravo Young from uh, Penn State. It's exciting bout. Take a look at how these gentlemen got here. Pletcher with the medical forfeit uh, uh, win here. Roman Bravo Young in the quarterfinals with Pletcher. And an interesting battle here between two warriors here, Nick Suriano and DeSanto at the semifinals. Well, let's be introduced to the finalists. Pletcher. There's Luke Pletcher coming out, a junior. Up going up against another junior, Nick Suriano, started at Penn State. Transferred to back home to Jersey. Last year, Luke Pletcher was in the finals. Got beat by Stevon Michich in the finals, so he's back to try to make it work this time, get himself a Big Ten championship. Well, Tim, either one of these guys is going to have a great story to tell. You know, because they weren't exactly peaking here about four or five uh, weeks ago. You know, Fletcher got lit up by, by Michich, and of course, you know, the, the real popular match between Dayton Fix and Suriano, and of course, Suriano and... Uh, Luke Pletcher, three-time state champ out of La Trobe, Pennsylvania. All-American last year. He had quite a run in the national tournament last year. Coming down from 141 as a true freshman, back to his originally recruited weight, 133. And a finalist in the Big Tens and a nice run to being an All-American last year. You know, these guys get to know each other pretty well. They do a lot of scouting. There's a lot of windows that get shut down during the course of the season when you get out there and get a feel for it, to get a chance to study some film. Pletcher really kind of did that with Roman Bravo Young and I think that uh, I think Suriano did the same thing with DeSanto he kind of picked him apart here had some nice a uh, couple nice takedowns out there and was physical enough in that match to stay with DeSanto Suriano from Paramus New Jersey the first national finalist last year for Rutgers Rutgers still looking for their first national champion ever and will it be Suriano will it be Anthony Ashnall well, they're both in the finals here of the Big Tens, and we get to see a couple of special young Rutgers Scarlet Knights today. The crowd noise you hear. Of course, we do the second and third place bouts and also the fifth and sixth place bouts as well. Suriano is a four-time state champion at Bergen Catholic, 159 and own oh, in high school. Never got beat in high school. You know what? impresses me about him, Jim, is he has center the guy, uh, center, the center. feet and the look and the center. laser focus of a boxer. And it just seems like uh, he uh, is uh, always leading and, and looking uh, that boxer mentality. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if some of that is going to be in his future. So the, the nice center. wide stance, real strong guy that has got center. a good set of hands. You know, one thing you look for in recruits, you look at guys that have that, that just grip strength that you know that's sometimes God-given. And you've got a guy like in Suriano here that will come at you with that square stance. Both these guys are very tactical in their approach to the, the matches. They're, they're used to wrestling tight matches, but they're also capable of opening up, particularly if they get a, a you know a little lead there. Pletcher more of a feet to the back guy. Suriano will turn you. Suriano went on that double leg shot, switches off to a single. Great opportunity with the leg sweep. Two points for Suriano, goes out in front with 20 seconds left in the first period, 2-0 here at 133. And we'll, we'll tell you this as we go along, but I'm telling you right now, everyone that's watching is going to get an opportunity to see the 125-pound championship at the end of this program. At the end of this program, they will replay the 125-pound overtime victory of Rivera over Spencer Lee because we were joined late due to the basketball overtime game in Nebraska. The 125 pound championships, Rivera and Lee, a classic, will be re-shown at the end of this championship program today. Nice job with short time with Suriano staying with that right 2-0 lead. And these matches are huge, right outs are huge to winning championships. Finishing periods in top position. Suriano up front, 2-0, will start on the bottom. Of 
what Pletcher's trying to do here is that since he wasn't able to get out that 25 seconds, if he could go ahead and stay on top of him a little longer, but Suriano with the quick escape. We'll see how aggressive Suriano decides to be. Because he does have so many ways he can score. Well, he's, he's, he's one of those straight-on guys. He'll shoot a double to set up a single, all right? He's, he's going to go ahead and attack you forward, going to make that match physical. But I saw something when he wrestled Austin DeSano in the semifinals where he did a nice job of tying up that left wrist. He's doing the same thing again. He's had the wrist on that side. He's going with the fingers right there. But he'll control that. When he feels his opponent pull out of it, that's when he shoots. 3-0 lead, Seriano on takedown with about 25 seconds left in the first period and a ride out and then an escape here in the second period. Just like we saw in the last match, great opportunity here. You can see how the pace for Seriano is slow, so it's an opportunity for Pletcher to get his offense off. He hasn't got a shot off, a decent shot off to this point. So quick with the hands of Soriano. He's moving, sliding around there. Now he comes back into that double again. Now he can cut across the front. Not able to get it. But again, another good solid attempt by Soriano. See Tom Ryan, Ohio State coach, asking for his athlete to get low. Not wrestle at the same level. A little bit of in and out action. You got a guy that's tying you up like that. You got to do it with motion and lower your elevation. Fingers Fletcher, fellas. a good scrambler. He has good attacks, just has not been able to get past that hands head deck. Right. You got a defense of Suriano back in on a reshot. Back to the neutral. Yeah, and what, what makes Suriano, I think, unique in this weight class is that he, he's got that wide stance, okay, and he's out there with his hands, hand fighting all the time, but he never seems to get out of balance, and he does have the ability to penetrate as well from that wide stance. And he did something not a lot of people can do often, and that's get past the big wall, the square stance of Pletcher, and he did so in the first period, and that's the difference right now. The takedown and the escape, and now Pletcher's turn. Soriano added a little time at the edge of the mat. And so many times that when I see this, these guys wrestling a down position, they're able to get up to their feet, but then they stop moving at the edge, and it becomes the advantage of the guy who's following. He can drop in on the leg, and he control the, the clock in those situations by a few more extra seconds. Nice job of that forward hook here with that left leg. See that right, right leg right there, that forward hook right there. Pinching, hand fighting again. Really making him carry a lot of weight right there. Now, a little bit better opportunity. Stop, I got stalling red, pushing him out. And they're gonna call stalling. Referee McCormick's gonna call stalling in the top position on Suriano. There's John Leonardis, long time coaching assistant and Donnie Pritzlaw, two time NCAA champion of Wisconsin, a New Jersey boy. These two have been with Scott Goodale for a long time, doing a lot of good things at Rutgers. See so the work there that Suriano is doing, making his opponent carry all of his weight. He's on the other side, though. It's a nice changeover. See how he's got him on the left-hand side right now? Soriano's in a drop-in, so good job by Pletcher getting his opponent off to his strong side, and then he was able to go ahead and, you know, capture the hands and get out for the escape. So 1.14 of riding time for Soriano. He's in control. Pletcher's going to need to figure out, break the code right here, and he's going to have to find the angle to uh, break through a really stout... Yeah, and Nick you, Suriano. And you can't wait too much longer to get your attack off there. You see that now Suriano is in a mode where he's not pushing back and he's applying no pressure into him, so none of that, that stuff works where you see how he's drifting out. He's going to go backwards or circle back out of this, usually to the left. He's not putting any pressure forward here on him, but he's holding position. It takes a lot of uh, uh, feel in that position, not to push into your opponent too much give him a good feel for his offense. The key to what looks like could be a first Big Ten championship for Nick Siriano is an early takedown in the first period. 
And it's going to, it looks like it's going to hold up. So that slide by doesn't work. There's no forward pressure by Suriano at this point. He's doing a great job of hand fighting. And Nick Suriano, one more step towards what he hopes is an NCAA championship, but he's a Big Ten champion. The first time for this young man, Nick Suriano. The Big Ten champion at 133. Take a look at this workmanlike decision by Nick Suriano. Goes straight on double legs, switches off to a single, and a beautiful thing to finish here. Gets that knee up into his chest, times the leap of Fletcher, catches him with the uh, foot up in the air, times that leap. All right, one, two, let's kick her out. And with the champ is Shane. All right, Tim. Nick Suriano, a stacked weight class. You're the last man standing. You love the fight. What's most rewarding about being the Big Ten champion? Oh, man, I just uh, ne never quitting, never giving up, no matter what the injuries are or the negative thoughts. And I'm here healthy, and I finally got it. How do you battle those demons in between your ears? Oh, man, you get them every day. And uh, I just had to keep persevering and training hard. I wasn't happy with my performance, but I got it done. Best of luck to you in Pittsburgh. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. At 141 pounds, Chad Rudd comes from the eighth seed, defeats the number one seed, Mike Carr, in the quarters and all the way to the finals against last year's Big Ten champion, Joy McKenna, for the Buckeyes. Great job of Chad Rudd getting to the finals here with that big win over Mikey Carr. Again, the number one seed. You know, you get to this tournament, though, that number one seed doesn't mean much unless you back it up and actually... Mikey Carr ended up finishing eighth in this weight class here as the number one seed. And you see how Red took over that number one seed, and here he is in the finals. And uh, McKenna uh, got the uh, win over Lee. That's a revenge. That's a turnaround in the duel meet. Lee defeated McKenna. So little, here they go. Yeah, that was a little bit more workmanlike by McKenna. Didn't go out with maybe as much emotion, but still was very aggressive in that match and got a lot of great takedowns. And so, you know, he looks... McKenna looks like he's back to the form that we had last year where he's Big Ten champion and then, you know, ended up becoming a third place finisher of the Nationals, only losing 1-0. Bryce Meredith in the uh, semifinals, so right there. And you're Chad Red, you're kind of on house money a little bit here today, and he's got a, an explosive double leg. McKenna coming up, trying to peek out here to the other side. Chad Red Jr., a sophomore out of Indianapolis, Indiana, New Palestine. His dad, Chad Red, has been his coach all his life, runs a uh, wrestling club, very successful wrestling club in the Indianapolis area. Great job of going ahead and keeping that. Now he's going, Red is going to go ahead and grab that leg back again. Now he's going to roll through. Can McKenna catch him? He's pretty solid in this position. He keeps his legs over the top, collects the takedown. Roy McKenna. The Big Ten champion out of Tawaka, New Jersey, Blair Academy. Started at Stanford. After a couple of years, he was an All-American there as a freshman. And after a couple of years, transferred to Ohio State. And he's been money for Coach Tom Ryan there on the left. Jay Jaggers, the two-time NCAA champion for the Buckeyes, his top assistant. You and I were mentioning off-air about, you know, when guys used to do those roll-throughs, that was just something seemed like found money. You know, speaking of money, that's found money right there doing the roll through and get it now anymore. It's just like change going down the gutter. These guys have, a, have a, addressed it. They're sprawling at the right time. They're anticipating guys coming in at their ankle on the roll through and they're collecting the points. Chad Red getting hot at the right time since December 15th, three months. He's only been about, he's six and six coming into this uh, tournament. And he has turned it on here with a Three big wins to get to the finals. McKenna's been steady all year. The redshirt senior, a two-time All-American. Was a U.S. Open champion, the USA Wrestling Championships as a collegiate last year, which isn't done often. A contender at that international, uh, for the international uh, USA wrestling team. He'll be heard from for a long time. And a lot of that inconsistency, Tim, has to do with, you know, just, he's a, he's a big 141 pounder, okay? He's... You know, Friday, Sunday, weigh-ins, keeping your weight under control. There he goes to that lookout right position, and now you can see the talent of Red keeping his feet. McKenna driving back in on that. Boy, he had it going one way or the other here. Red did a nice job to delay that takedown, but it was... Uh, McKenna has great anticipation of what your next scramble is. He executes so well, he's... Uh, 
He's a perfectionist. He's 4.0 student. Everything he does, he wants to be great, and he Not certainly has uh, made an impact on this Buckeye team since coming over from Stanford. And uh, by set. the way, congratulations to Jason Borelli, the head coach of Stanford, who won their first ever Pac-12 uh, championship this weekend. In 85 years of wrestling, Stanford's never won a conference championship. They upset the host, uh, Arizona State, and, and uh, so pretty neat to see the kind of program uh, come to the heights that uh, Stanford has this year. Well, that's amazing because, you know, everybody thought at the beginning of the year, Stanford, or, or, excuse me, Arizona State with returning national champions, the Heath Valencia and the, and the recruiting that they've had in that program. That's quite an effort. Congratulations to Oscarelli and the Cardinal. And it was Jason's birthday yesterday, so that's a pretty good present. <laughs> and, you know, the key to, I, I would say, to McKenna winning it all, or winning against the tough, is what he's doing right now, and that's the ride. Well, you know, there's a, there's a match out there in his future, he hopes, against the returning national champion, Yanni Diaka Mahalas, who's an excellent scrambler, who's also very unique, skill set, gifts, great strength, incredibly long arms, and it seems like he, he, he can get to things so quickly, and you know, I, I know in the back of his mind, Same he's, he's way, guys. wanting Good to scars. do everything that he can, including winning this match here in decisive fashion here to get to go into that situation with a lot of confidence. The tournament certainly be the top two guys. You know, one of the things that has been happening around the Big Ten and in the nation is this, uh, uh, the great wrestling rooms that are uh, being built. And Ohio State has one that's going up, will be world class. And the reason I bring it up is Joy McKenna interned with the uh, uh, the company that built the wrestling complex last year. And comes from that kind of stock. His dad, Jimmy, is the CEO of a construction company in Manhattan. But uh, what a facility. Ohio State's going to unveil here in a couple of months, and they're going up all over the place, Jim. Well, it's because you've got these great programs run by these coaches that, that uh, want to create legacies of their sport on their campus, not only with their performances. And talking to Pat Dungai from Penn State, and don't think that they're going to get left behind either. <laughs> so get back to this match here, Chad Red. Their top position, doing a pretty good job of staying with McKenna. All right, roll through right there. Be careful with that knee. Good job. Three. Boy, you talk about the head up all the time, Jim. Yeah. McKenna just did a great job of that. Yeah, and he's now getting back points. You got at least two. Again, he's focusing on, you ever think if you run up there on the shoulders, you're gonna get it, but he focuses on splitting the legs right there, keeping the belt buckled to the sky, and the shoulders will follow. You're just joining us, Sebastian Rivera, Seabass, as they call him, from Northwestern, one at 125 over Spencer Lee in overtime, and Nick Soriano from Rutgers is the 133-pound champion. We're at 141 pounds here at Williams Arena in Minnesota for the Big Ten Wrestling Championships. Six New Jerseyans in the finals, four Pennsylvanians. Half the field is from New Jersey or Pennsylvania. One of those is Keep Joey moving. McKenna to walk in New Jersey. Keep that legal. He's a Blair Academy Keep that product. Yeah, he's, he's the kind of guy that you give up that first takedown and you have to work so hard to get out. And you may, you may not, but it's just like that. He, he's, you know, I, I'd have to think that with, with his experience and how tough he is in the top position, he gets that first takedown. There's just like a, a deep exhale that happens when you're out there in the matches. I got this one. And so it's going to be interesting, again, in a week and a half to see what this man's quest is to become a national titleist. 
And when you mention he's so this, tough in the top position. I've been watching Chad Red, and I think that's what happened. He started fast, and as soon as he got that, where he says, I got this, he made that run to the finals, and then he comes up against McKenna, and he might be saying, I don't know whether I have this or not. I know. And, uh, but that's how he got to the finals. Credit to Chad Red Jr., because he went out there and went after it, dictated the pace, and uh, took advantage of the opportunity to be on the side of the bracket. And it allowed him to get to the finals against Joey McKenna, last year's Big Ten champion. Good, always kind of measuring his stance. See how he drifts that hand, that left hand down. Always, he's always measuring how high he is up there. You know, getting that, those hands down. He, he doesn't come out of that stance very often, and, but he also keeps the weight on his toes. I love watching wrestlers that keep the weight off of their heels. And you take a look at the you know, guys that get in the finals are always moving their feet. Work through those positions. A minute left in the third period. Joey McKenna out in front, eight to two. He's had takedowns. He's had back points. He's having it his way. Joey McKenna, last year's Big Ten champion, going for two. And you mentioned it, Jim. It's workmanlike because... Uh, if you think this is Joy's, you know, uh, pinnacle pursuit, uh, it is not because that comes in two weeks. No satisfaction unless he ends up on the top of the podium. And yet you got to get what you got to get done. And that'll be something that he can never taken away as a two-time Big Ten champion. Yeah, you're exactly right, Timmy. You got to go ahead. And, you know, in this next week and a half before the tournament, you're thinking, well, you know, I have what it takes. Everything's moving in the right direction. Getting it done. Can't wait to challenge myself on the big show. I have a style that's tough to beat, and I'm tough. The finish period's out strong. Two-town Big Ten champion looking to add more to his NCAA credentials. He's excited, he should be, he has fun. He's a perfectionist. He's 4.0 in the grade point average. He's perfect two for two as a Buckeye in the Big Ten Wrestling Championships. Joy McKenna, your 141 pound Big Ten champion. Let's take a look at the highlights here with Joy McKenna. He's able to go ahead and get in on the leg. Really solidly, good finish. Again, chest high, drops back in, and that's after he showed a little look the other way. Chad Red was a pretty decent scrambler in a lot of situations here, but Joe McKenna just seemed to be one better, then followed it up and got some back points. And when he wants to stay on top of you, he's going to go ahead and do that. That aggressiveness here that we saw that was working against him is working for him now. And for the second year in a row, Shane has McKenna as the champion. Joey, you're a four-time conference champion, two in the Pac-12, and now a two-time Big Ten champion. You've wrestled on the biggest stages in the world. What triggers you into beast mode for these matches? Um, a lot of it right now is just staying calm, cool, and collected. Uh, you know, I know I'm a really good wrestler, but I just need to trust in God, trust in my preparation, um, and just go out there and let everything happen. Uh, I've held too much back before, so right now, just trying to let it all out there and unleash. Biggest differences technically between now and that of a year ago when you were third in Cleveland? I mean, I just know what I need to get to. Um, a lot more focus on my wrestling, less on what guys are going to do, a little less scouting, just focus on me, um, what I can do out there, and just let wrestling happen. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, now we're going to go to Ohio State and Rutgers. Somebody's going to get their second Big Ten championship for their program. 149, Micah Jordan in the finals again, but has not won one yet. He's a senior, another senior, Anthony Ashnell, going for his third Big Ten title. Never has that happened in Rutgers history. They've never had a national champion. Will it be Suriano? Will it be Ashnell? Well, this young man, Anthony Ashnell, boy, he's special. The trajectory, Jim, in the last couple of years of what he's gone from to where he is today is impressive you know it really is i mean you, here he is you see his path okay six to three over a mean which would be tough tommy thorne had a good tournament five to one win over tommy but 
Hey, I've been impressed with the way Jordan's come out there. He's been out there to put up some points. And if you recall last time that these two wrestled, Ashnall got out to a 10-0 lead, all right? And then you mentioned there were 24. 14 to 10. Yeah, 14 to 10. So there was a big comeback by Jordan. But you mentioned Anthony Ashnall's improvement. You know, when he came out of a high school, really tough in the top position, four-time state champion from New Jersey, you know, really the, the, the statewide hope and going to Rutgers, the in-state school, and be a great story if he could go ahead and finish his career out here with a couple of titles. But Micah Jordan has been up to the task as well, been improving and probably is sitting in a great position here. To really, this could be a rematch of, uh, of, of, the, of the finals, basically, or I'll see this in the finals here in another week and a half. Well, that's why they're both at this way. Micah Jordan down from 157 really feels like he can win at 149. That's why he came there. He prepared for it for an entire year. Anthony Ashnall feeling that 149 allows him to be at his best and he was hurt in the entire last year, out with injury, got his sixth year, and he's a graduate senior, wrestling with a lot of gratitude for the opportunity to win that first title for Rutgers. He was the first four-timer ever in New Jersey high school history. Now he'd like to be the first national champion, already the only three-time All-American in Rutgers history. Anthony Ashnell with the red bands, Rutgers. Micah Jordan. His brother, Bo, in the corner as an assistant coach now. Four-time All-American. Rocky, his younger brother, a freshman redshirting this year. So one more Jordan to come for the Buckeyes. And Tim, when you go out there and put up 10 points on Anderson on a wrestler as good as Micah Jordan, you know that that's not going to happen automatically again. And, you know, the way he did that, he was able to go out there, get a takedown right away, and go right into a tilt. You know, a couple tilts and a takedown, and there were his 10 points, and he was pretty much holding on at that point. So Jordan slowing it down, getting to his shot right away. Neutral. Able to come out the back door, all right? Neutral. Pretty good at finishing. Neutral. Right there, he's got Neutral. the head up underneath the knee, but now Ashnall improving his position here, and he'll go ahead and try to stack Neutral. Jordan up. Jordan understands that. He's trying to get his hand, his left hand, and his elbow posted, get a little elevation himself. Neutral. A lot of work down there by Jordan and end up with a stalemate. Come back to the center. No action there, a minute three. No points yet in this first period at 149 pounds. A rematch from the Cliff Keen Invitational in early December. Jim already talked about it. Ashnault went out to a big lead and a major comeback in the third period. And then by, uh, Jordan fell a little short. Yeah, and so you can already see that Ashnault hasn't really got to his shot yet. And that's you know, re really important, but that's probably where Anthony Ashnall's uh, improvement has been over his time at Rutgers, is getting to the legs, being finishing, and, and actually being poised in matches, and, and but constantly moving and, and not getting pushed around out there at, at all. See our Flow rankings, Flow Wrestling, our partners in national rankings, and there they were, number one and two at 149, right here in the Big Ten Finals. Yeah, so if you're Micah Jordan, you're going, well, it's 10 points better than it was the last time. <laughs> National, a two-time NCAA semifinalist, a two-time Big Ten champion, has not been to the finals yet. Suriano last year, the 133, now Big Ten champion, was a finalist last year, and that's the highest finish in program history for Rutgers. So Ashnault will default. Will Give right, uh, period, no um, Jordan, Jordan uh, the choice, and he chooses neutral. Yep, good choice by him because he's had difficulty getting away. And so if you do that, you're going to have to get on your offense right away. And Jordan already with a shot. He really needs to pick it up. So he's gone from a 24-point match to just a very tactical, calculated experience here by both guys. In our fourth weight class, where we've seen both Ohio State and Rutgers win a championship. If you're a Penn State fan, you're going, we're in the lead, and we haven't seen Penn State yet. Your time is coming. Next weight class, six in a row. Penn State from 157 to heavyweight will have a representative and an opportunity to win a Big Ten championship. They have clinched the Big Ten title. But Ohio State comfortably in second place. Tom Ryan continues the great foundation he has set there, and 
good showings at the Big Ten Championships. Jordan in on another shot here, but Ashnall getting his hips back. Doing good enough work there by burying his hips, shoelaces flat. All right, there's a stall warning. That's a good pace that you want to keep up there if you're Jordan. And remember, you're, you're one point behind in this match because you've got to assume that, that Ashnall's going to be able to get up unless you can go ahead and ride him for a minute, which yeah. is probably going to be the strategy in the third period. Well, and a good point, start off Jim, with. because if you're not going to get a takedown, it's nice to get a stall warning. Oh, wow, there's a little reshot there. And uh, Jordan gets out of position. Ashnall takes advantage and scores two points with 25 seconds left in the period. Beautiful footwork there by uh, Ashnall. They're measuring Jordan's shot. And this is why he can go all the way in this tournament because he's got the ability to finish out the period in the top position. No question about it. 1,000, 2,000. That's the end of the second Seven, period. They'll go to the center. Take a look at that. This was a shot that really wasn't all that well set up, right? Measured. Drop the hips, immediately get the footwork going here, and bull rush the man over when you get the angle. There's Scott Goodale right there. Done a great job at uh, Rutgers to the right there. Head down. On. Can we get this third one? Can we make a statement? And he's making a statement in how he has packed the rack. Over 5,000 fans every time they have a dual meet and uh, just really doing a great job there and they have a new facility they are hoping to get in in the summer at Rutgers improving their facilities and uh, pretty much put a fence around New Jersey as far as getting their best and trying to vie for that uh, national prominence come to Rutgers to win a national title but they got to get their first one Jim good work there by Jordan now he's able to look him over he's gonna have to go ahead and probably cut him at this point gonna drive him off nice job by Micah Jordan and that was created by the activity Tim good in and out act activity here all right able to go a left-handed whip over off that shot again both guys have kind of measured each other's shots and able to counter them Counter each other. Right. There's Bo Jordan, the four-time All-American brother, graduated last year, now on the staff. If the two-time All-American, Micah Jordan's going to get her done, he's going to get it done with on his feet again from St. Paris Graham High School. Micah Jordan trying to be a Big Ten champion for the first time. And yeah. he keeps, he drops right back in. That was a situation where Ashnaught was heading for the ankle pick, and he drove with his level over and you know, kind of just came into him on the double leg there. You can see that Ashnall started this right there on the ankle pick. He anticipated it and drove right through it. We're tied up. Tied up, no riding time. One minute left in regulation. And, oh, oh. Wow. He does not look that. Oh. Jordan hoping he can get away from Ashnall. Is that a reversal? Here. That's yeah. a reversal. It's not one and two because. Nice job by Jordan with the switch, so he's back to the original position, but he burned a little clock there. Now, in and out, back on the shot. Pretty good shape right there. Ashnell burying his hips, laces flat. Comes back in on the leg. All right, he's got the leg hooked. If he can pop his head out, or cut across. No, Ashnell has a cradle. He's and got he the points. The 20 seconds left, Ashnall comes out on top after a reversal, then an escape by Micah Jordan, and a takedown by Ashnall to seal the deal. Both these guys, tough, wow, great well, battle. If you're gonna win championships, you've gotta keep wrestling through the seven minutes and take the scoring opportunities that are presented right there. That's exactly what Ashnall did. He didn't think about where he was on the mat, he thought about he was in the middle and had a scoring opportunity and locked up that cradle. One escape, and time runs out, and Anthony Ashnall makes history three-time Big Ten champion, first in program history. And it was not done without a fight from Micah Jordan. Great man, and like you said, Jim, we're gonna see this match again, quite likely. Anthony Ashnall, your winner at 149 pounds. And there's his dad. He's happy. Boy, there were some really huh? things that were well done here. There's the escape, the actually reversal that Ashnault was able to go ahead and get to. Jordan fighting heavily. Right there, and that two points there. And here's the cradle he locked up. He's behind the leg. 
kind of caught Jordan uh, diving in there instead of really kind of going to the edge of the mat and going off the mat. And there's our coach Goodale, coach Donnie Prizloff, and a happy dad. And a relieved dad. And let's go to Shane, who's with Anthony. All right, Anthony, three-time Big Ten champion. What makes this title unique? Uh, I got to do it with a teammate that did it at 133. Um, first time that happened for Rutgers, two-time champs. Jordan's a great opponent. I mean, I had to wrestle a really good match to get that W. I'm excited, but the goal is to be a national champ. You wear that R with so much pride. You are the face of the program. You'll try to become the first ever national champion. Speak about the responsibility that comes with being the face of a program. Uh, eyes are always on you, you know. When you think no one's watching, that's when you got to be doing things a little bit better. And uh, I think it added up over my career, just doing extra stuff here and there and uh, extra work and got, to, got me to this point. Congratulations. It's been fun watching you. Thank you. Tyler Berger finished fourth last year at this weight class. Now he's in the finals against number one ranked Jason Null. I mentioned he was going for his third Big Ten title. No, not so. He was injured last year, had to default, but he is going for his third NCAA title. He'd like to get his second Big Ten wrestling title right now. Going up against Tyler Berger, who he's beat earlier in the year in the dual meet. Take a look how they got here. Null, it's a pretty solid decision there. Peroni won by fall, and then the 7-1 to over Pantaleo, who can be amazingly tough to go ahead and score points on. Berger beat Belize, and uh, nice decision over Van Brill as well. Tough weight class. Good balance in here. Nolf right in a shot right there. Easily sweeps that leg and the leg's up in the air. It was 10-4 to earlier uh, when they wrestled in the dual meet on January 20th. And Berger has not lost since. Made his way to the finals. And he uh, gets right to work. Jason Nolf, the two-time NCAA champion, three-time finalist from Yatesboro, Pennsylvania, Catanning High School. Making a real big physical statement there on the edge of the mat and also jumping out there with him. You know, Nolf is one of the quicker guys in the country. He gets that, that, that shot off with his right leg. And, you know, Berger's got pretty good offense himself. Nolf right back in on that leg again. Nice shin whizzer there by Berger, but he comes up to his feet. Nolf does. Got his hands locked the correct way right there. The out, outside palm over the top right there. Now he's going to run the pipe. Trying to get Berger off balance. Gets his hips a little bit closer. Can he go ahead and sweep it again? Right there. Just an all timing right there. Again, what makes that move impressive is that he's going for that sweep, not when the foot is on the ground, but when the opponent brings his his uh, leg up and he's doing all, the opponent's doing all the work, they're jumping off off the ground. All you gotta do is change the direction of his fall with the sweep. Tyler Berger, a senior out of Prineville, Oregon, one of the best to come out of Oregon in a long time, top recruit nationally, comes to Nebraska and is certainly made an impact on the program and right now he's got his hands full against the three-time all-american two-time ncaa champion jason nolf and nolf has wasted no time getting to his offense and what's been impressive about it Berger basically shading that that left knee uh, pad right now he doesn't want to step in too close he's trying to keep it away from especially from distance but nolf's going to drive back in on a double seen that a few times comes right into an elbow tie Nolf, the first of six wrestlers with the blue and white singlet. The Nittany Lions clinched their sixth title in the, the Kale San Sanderson era. The sixth Big Ten title. They've won seven out of their last eight NCAA titles. And it will be Nolf and five other Nittany Lions the rest of the way. Now, this is really the, the heart of their order. It's so unique. And the guys on this team with Joseph, Nolf, Nickel, Mark Hall, all guys that can possibly win three national titles in their career have that type of uh, success. 
was in their wrestling room a few months back here, and I said, hey, champ, and about, every, about four or five. <laughs> Everybody well, looked like around. About eight or That's nine good. guys looked at you. That's know? good. Well, they call old Jason Nolf the creator because he's comfortable being uncomfortable, and he'll go places other people don't go, and he likes to put you in places you do not want to be. Again, still on his offense the whole time. Berger doing a nicer job of, of, of you know, keeping Nolf at distance, but not backing Under up. Under control. Under control. At the end of the period, a 4-2 lead by Jason Nolf, the leader of the pack for the Nittany Lions. Red's going down. Nothing stupid, guys. And those Lions are out ahead, clinching. Their Big Ten title, Ohio State, comfortably in second, will get the runner-up trophy. And Minnesota out in front now, and they still have a wrestler left. So does Iowa. And uh, this is Nebraska's only hope to put more points on the board in the finals. But like Jim mentioned earlier, we've got third and fourth and fifth and sixth matches going on worth a point each. And so there's a lot that can happen in these next uh, six matches. Look at uh, that back bow effort there by, he's got that ankle wrapped at, at the shoelace. He's going to look for the giant step. Berger doing a nice job of getting his head up now. Now he's in an ankle pass situation. Oh, uh, now that's, got a, the referee's going to be on this here because that was an effort to take it beyond its, where it was intended to go, that ankle. not only successful on the mat but in the classroom he has received the physics award from Penn State as a top physics uh, student a 4.5 GPA you just you're amazed by uh, this young man's leadership and like you said he's not alone it's a stable full of uh, great wrestlers that uh, have really gelled over the last few years under Sanderson's leadership yeah, and those those Single leg finishes right there are just world class. I mean, just going ahead and, and that, that technique that he has right there. And Berger's not a, you know, he's a man with a lot of balance. And you get the real strong sense that there's some bad blood going on right now with these two guys. It's a hard physical match. Short time in the second period. 6 3 score, already 224 of riding time. And today's State Farm State of Success is Jason Nolf, that guy right there, because he is in the lead as the all time pin leader for the Penn State Nitt Nittany Lions over his teammate Bo Nickel. And there's uh, there's this match, there's five more to go, so not out of the question that Bo Nickel could pass him, but I don't think we're done with falls by uh, Jason Nolf either. He's today's State Farm State of Success for his success as a pinner. The all-time leader in the Penn State program. I love watching Jason Nolf, how he just changes his lead leg so often in, in a match. It seems like he could, could go left lead and right lead. And always very quick to that shot right there. That's his bread and butter. He's able to cut Berger off there with his... Berger has the ability against most opponents to get to the leg. It's a really nice quick finish to the far ankle. You're not getting anything off. One of the things people forget is funky, as uh, Nolf can be. I mean, he has got the best fundamentals out there. It always comes down to great execution, and there it was again, Jim. Yep, to your point, you know, he comes up always on top of the scrambles. Now he's working for potentially a near side cradle. But, you know, I, I, when he first came in, he was just so solid. I mean, he had the he had the other things, the basics down, that he could go ahead and spend the time trying to be creative, and and that's I've heard many coaches say that he's the guy that uh, that you know they turn on the stand film, chin, right, the DVR, to be able to see what he's doing. Back in another shot again. 
run the pipe, and now come back up. All right? Driving through. Just having fun, Jason Nolf. Last year, he had to default out, prepare himself for the NCAAs. Didn't get a chance to get to the finals this year. He comes back and wins his second Big Ten championship. A dominant performance by the champs, 12 to 4 with riding time. Jason Knoll, the first Nittany Lion today to win a Big Ten championship. A lot of respect there shown by Tyler Berger, knowing that he's up against one of the great ones there in J Jason Nolf. Take a look at the highlights of this match. And just even right from the beginning, this nice post to that single right there, coming up to a beautiful finish. And he hit the same finish several times. If Berger could maybe stop that, that might be a, him getting in on that left leg. Thanks, Wonderful job by Jason Nolf. Well, let's go to Shane. Who's with Jason? Jason, you are one of the most intense competitors inside that circle, but you make it look so effortless. How do you deal with nerves and anxiety? Do you have any? Uh, I just pray that God turns my nerves into energy and I feel that spirit. And now I'm just grateful to compete here. Obviously, I want to win every time. But I'm, just, I'm, I'm really happy to be in a position I'm in around the coaches I'm around and around the teammates I'm around as well. Feature match is brought to you by Perla Wrestling, creators of the world's first online wrestling academy. Check us out at PerlerWrestling.com. And it's a big one, 160 pound pound match. These guys have neither one ever won a Big Ten championship. Let's introduce the finalists. There is Vincenzo Joseph, the two-time NCAA champion has never won a Big Ten title. And Marinelli from Iowa getting here out of the number two seed with a hard fought win in the semis over Wick and Joseph winning by fall over Massa. That was an impressive win, Tim. Probably people ask me, what, what's the most impressive match you saw? And that was that Joseph Massa match where he just went out there and got after it and, and so solid on his finishes. and got a fall against a really, really tough wrestler. And of course, the Wick Marinelli match was another war. See these guys both going at it with their collar ties. Mike Chase give a little explanation what he'll take and not take. And now, now uh, uh, Penn State has thrown the brick. Marinelli gets a, it. looked like a takedown, but clearly after the whistle. And the only time these guys have met, Marinelli did win last year, nine to six, in the dual meet. Marinelli winning nine to six, of course, Chenzo Joseph going on and winning his second. Vincenzo Joseph's the only Nittany Lion to ever win an NCAA title, both as a freshman and a sophomore. Beating Isaiah Martinez uh, both times, but it was Isaiah Martinez that has kept him from being a Big Ten champion. Imar from Illinois, obviously a four-timer. And yeah. here's a hands to the face that we're looking at. And I don't see it. I Do don't you? either, Tim, so. No yep. call. Good power ties, and that's what you're gonna get a lot from Marinella here. He likes to work hard with that right hand collar. And he'll, you just saw right there, well, he'll post into that high crotch shot right there. Right. And if he comes over collar, that means if, it, if Vincenzo has a, a collar and he goes over the top, he'll go to the other side. So he's got shots to both sides of the body, but he gets you so focused on getting your head club that you forget about he's really there to attack legs. Both these guys undefeated. Ten undefeated wrestlers in the finals, and these guys have not met this year. They met last year, Marinelli winning the duel. Both All-Americans, of course. Joseph, the two-time NCAA champion. Marinelli, the bull, out of Miamisburg, Ohio, a St. Paris Graham, the second St. Paris Graham athlete in the finals. Of course, Micah Jordan for Ohio State. They were teammates. Well, it, it, the difference that, that Joseph, when he, when he goes overhook with you, when he stops a, a, a man's shot, you know, he's got that inside trip, and that was money for him when he used to go against Isaiah Martinez, particularly in the, uh, uh, the finals. But... Marinelli understands that. He, you see that he comes hard a lot of the time, but you know what? When the, Vincenzo gets into that, when he has that lock right there, he's going to wait for Joseph to go inside trip. 
and if, if he does, you know, if he just pushes back, he doesn't push into it like his, most opponents do that go down with that trip. So he, he'll squeeze hard around the waist, take what he has, but he doesn't push with his legs, and so it makes it more difficult for Joseph to get there. Now he's back in on a shot. He's attacked both sides of the body. Joseph is expert at kicking out and turning in right there. Marinelli's key to the really semifinals uh, win over Wick was the first period takedown. Now these guys are really good. I mean, it's what always impressed me about Joseph is with just his calmness out there, how he doesn't really get out of his breathing pattern too much. And Marinelli wants you to take you into deep water. Joseph from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, is looking forward to a week and a half trying to get his third NCAA title because he prepped at Pitt Central Catholic. So he'll be getting to wrestle in front of the home crowd. He's very, very gifted. Right there, backing on that shot. This is a good position for him to be in, Marinelli. But there's that overhook right there. Marinelli's got to be careful not to push in too much here because that's when that inside trip shows up. You see how he's hooked the far ankle on it. He's as good as anybody is in the, in the country of keeping that position. That was excellent defense, Tim. Kale Sanderson in his 10th year at Penn State, 13th year as a head coach, of course, 159-0. The last time these guys met, Marinelli had the upper hand. And you can see the position we're talking about here, double overhook, but Marinelli doesn't really drive into it. He just pulls him down here, but he doesn't push into it to make that under, uh, that inside trip work for him. And he's, he's been the most successful at battling that really successful position of the Central Joseph. The escape for Joseph puts him out front 1-0 early in the second period. Yeah, nice job there. You're working a little bit more for Beckham. Now inside trip all the way through. Marinelli gets the points. Just uh, it's deja vu all over again, Jimmy. <laughs> And he does it with squeezing. You notice how he doesn't push in too much? Because if he does, Vincenzo's gonna take him over with it, but he just does it with that bear hug and incredibly strong. Does it all with the squeeze. It was like he saw the replay from last year's dual mate and but he did it again, but watch out because now he understands in your point very much as far as Suriano or anyone else, he does not have to push in now. Yeah, it's, and you saw that Joseph went to that inside trip again and Marinelli had his rear end way back. I'm gonna give that to him. 50 seconds left, okay, how do you come back from a 6-2 deficit right now? Well, it's gotta be a scoring opportunity. Look for Joseph maybe to attack the leg that has the, the knee pad on it. He's got a good shot off that. Marinelli was sixth last year here in the championships and sixth in the NCAA championships. And right now, he's out in front six to two trying to keep Joseph He's taking being shut out as a Big Ten champion his junior year. Yeah, he's taking Marinelli's taking shots, which is you know, but he's not doesn't have to go ahead and try to finish it unless it's absolutely there. Comes heavy on that head one more time. Let's take a look at the takedown and near fall right there off the post. And you notice how he didn't go for the leg. He went right for the bear hug that time and basically just squeezed, bear hugged him, squeezed him down. Didn't drive in too much. And notice how he, his grip slid up the chest a little bit. That's why he was able to go ahead and keep his shoulders down. He's locked more on the waist. I think uh, uh, Marinelli, uh, uh, excuse me, jo uh, Joseph takes him over. Big hill to climb now for Joseph. Starts on top. In the third period, trailing six to two. No riding time advantage for either wrestler. And seven to two with that escape now. So is there a six point move with Joseph? Well, we know there is. Can he execute it here in the third period of the Big Ten Wrestling Championships at 165 pounds? Well, he's got to time the reach of that collar tie right there if he's going to get on the leg. But again, it may not be enough. And 
Marinelli's giving enough ground, and why wouldn't he? You're up 7-2 on a national champ. Now he gets to the leg. Joseph does, cuts across the other side. She's got his chest sealed pretty well on that thigh. Comes up to his feet. Good battle by Marinelli. He goes for the big move in the cradle, and Marinelli's going to put him in trouble here. Locked a little bit higher. Wow, look at the feet come down on the mat. There Whoa. it is. And yeah. nice job by Marinelli, feeling it all the way. Yeah, he had his butt way back, right? Really kind of the same thing we've been talking about since the beginning of the match. Marinelli has that feel in that position. This is something that Joseph will take to the bank, memory banks. Mark Hall, next up for the Nittany Lions, watching his teammate get stunned a little bit by Alex Marinelli and Marinelli. He's come through a lot in these last several months. Well, you talk about, you know, Joseph went for the big move because he needed a big move in that situation with the cradle. Marinelli ducked back and then the critical time, again, kept his rear end back and it's almost impossible to inside trip a guy that's got his legs that far back and is that strong. You know, but this whole match, I think that, you know, just early in the match, you saw where Baronelli got to his offense. He got to his single leg. He got to his, his post uh, head to the outside shot. And he was the better in that position right there with the overhook of Joseph. After right. a disappointing Big Tens last year, a disappointing sixth place finish in the NCAAs, Alex Marinelli wins a Big Ten championship as a sophomore fighting through a lot of adversity, personally, injuries, and here he is. Iowa gets a Big Ten, a wrestling champion at 165 pounds. He beats the two-time NCAA champion, Vincenzo Joseph. And there's the happy Tom Brands, the head coach. And here's the critical position, that post and coming up around the waist, but staying off really getting aggressive at that point in time and knocking him down with that bear hug. And here, he's got those hips way back, slides it back through. You can tell they've been working on that inside trip the way he uh, handled that position. Let's go to Shane with Marinelli. All right, Alex, you know Vincenzo Joseph very well. What was the game plan coming in? Where was that match won? The match was won by my attacks, not his. I don't care what he has. I care what I have, you know what I'm saying? So. That was the game plan. I don't really know what's going on right now, but that was the game oh, plan. That is the 200th Big Ten Championship in program history. That has to mean a lot. It's been a tough year for you. A lot of adversity. What does this title mean to you? Uh, it means everything. Uh, that's, that's for Eli, you know. Um, uh, the first match, when I wrestled Wick, as soon as I got on top, I looked at the Eli patch. That gave me motivation throughout the whole tournament. So, Congratulations, Bull. Thank you. Thank you. No question, we've been getting into something. It's been a party for two days here at Williams Arena, and right now we're ready for 174 pounds. Mark Hall, number one, versus number two, Miles Amin, the two, top two seated wrestlers, the Big Ten champion, Mark Hall. Two juniors, two rivals. Every time they've wrestled, it's been a one-point match, and it's all been Mark Hall getting the edge. Take a look how these guys got here to finals. And Mark Hall was tough wins. Skatska was only a 4 2 win. And of course, you see Amino in a tough decision over Lighty from Purdue. You know, that, that's, that, you know, that's, that's it. almost every match in this tournament here. It's just a battle. You think that you've got the number one guy and turning national champion. And home team guy battled him pretty well in that bout. Mark Hall is a special. Athlete having a great season this year. Already a win over last year's NCAA champion, Zahid Valencia. Of course, Mark Hall won as a true freshman two years ago, the NCAA championship. Won a Big Ten title last year. The last time these two guys met, it was 3-2 to two in the dual meet, February 1st. Mark Hall winning 3-2. to two. Fingers. Being a pretty good scrambler, go ahead and and, uh, and also a really solid uh, leg rider. 
So these matches, he's been had the ability to go ahead and slow down Hall quite a bit. Hall looking for that, uh, looks, like looks quite a bit for that duck under, but again, at this level, these guys have scouted each other out. Now they've faced each other a number of times. They're not gonna go ahead and there's a nice little shot there by Hall. He's able, is he able to shelf the leg? See the shin wizard being applied right there by Amin. Notice how he's got the hip in good position right there where he's got his hip out over the knee. And the referee calls a stalemate. Good counter there by Amin. Fingers. That was a good effort by Hall to get to the back leg of Amin. Amin will keep that left leg back most of the time. Drops into the shot, a little bit across the body, and whoa, that's a really good job by Amin of getting back to the neutral Work position. It. Mark Hall in familiar territory where he was a, a several time state champion for Apple Valley, Minnesota. He won six straight team titles and six straight individual oh, titles. The only wrestler awesome. ever to win 12 individual and be a part of uh, uh, the team title, six and six. That's it, Paul. He was the 2016 Dave Schultz High School Excellence Award. Six titles in Minnesota, and here he is going for a Big Ten title in Williams Arena on the campus of the University of Minnesota. Either guy backing up, you can see a lot of this the collar tie. There's a little slide by attempt by Hall. He's got the inside leg raised here. Now he drops back in there. Uh, Shot. Mean pretty tough to score out. on in this go. position. Put him in danger. Feet out. Here we go. Here we go. Can he create a little hip separation? Keep the ankles free. So that the mean is move forward on that. Nice oh, job of moving forward there by Hall and finishing that technique. Go, gentlemen. You know, Hall gets that two points. Goes out ahead 2-0. Well, just as a teaching technique. When you're trying to finish coming out the back door like that, it's not unlike when a guy's trying to ride your ankles in the bottom position. So what do you do in those situations? Step red, don't move, down easy, Green. Move out, you know, create a little bit of distance. Get the guy reaching, stretching, okay? Really test the guy's grip. That's exactly what Hall did there to create a better scramble for him to be able to finish, finish that takedown. The last two titles. And the one on that. Mark Hall has been a part of in the NCAAs, winning as a true freshman. Last year losing to Zed Valencia. How'd you like to be Miles Amin? He's been so consistent right up there underneath two world-class wrestlers there. And he just has not been able to break that code, get over the hump that first time. And like we said, every match is a one-point match, but Hall has been out on top every time. Yeah, I agree with Good you, but, but, but Amin has had a really nice career so far. That's right, yeah. very consistent. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I mean, yeah. there he is, right there all the time, super consistent, a great leader. And high place winner and, and a really integral part last year of Michigan finishing fourth in the country. Yeah. Good in all positions, and right now, he's finding himself having a hard time coming up underneath. Hall is, and you've talked about it before, Hall is so good on top. Yeah, he is, and that's well, the surprising thing about watching his development. I mean, I, he came in with a, a good array of, and it's not just good at turning people, but it's making you work harder than what you would normally work in the down position. He gets on to the side, kind of side mounts you a little bit there, really works in putting your head down, traps ankles really well. We'll see how committed he is to this ride. Not very, but, you know to get him an example of it, but. Both these wrestlers, two-time All-Americans, both juniors, and Miles Amin, a part of the Ross School of Business, highly touted School of Business of Michigan. You know, so far, though, the match has slowed down. Amin's got away from the, you know, twice now, so. We've talked about it before, Jim, the poise of Mark Hall. He never seems like he's rushing, knows where he's at. Loves to use those heavy hands. Yeah, and, and the critical, you know, if you, if you attack him straight on, he's one of the best guys in the country about bringing his hips to the party, basically going forward and really knocking guys down when they try to shoot. two-time national junior champion, a cadet world champion, and a contender in 2016 for the at the Olympic trials. A lot of these wrestlers, the next 
the next level, the next generation to represent USA. We're seeing right here today, Jim. Yeah, and, and, and with with Hall again with 17 seconds left, you take that shot, and you're you're only probably one. And you get to the legs, you're only one third through the battle, and not many people get to his legs. It's the end of the second period. Two to two, and Hall will get his choice. And he'll choose down his opportunity to get out, take the lead. All right, third period, set bottom, now top. You know, it, it is also an opportunity for Amin. He's really tough in this top position. If he can go ahead and create an environment here where he gets on top, traps it. So, you notice he's coming off to the side right there, too. He's got a good spiral ride, cross face. And notice how he scoops that near leg up, all right, because he wants to put that leg in. Hall senses that, gets to his feet. Yeah, nice forward trip, follows it up there with the ankle ride, and then loses it there at the edge. We're going to decide it on the feet. And can Amin break, Amin break through? Hall really made that look easy. Just made Amin say, I'm not going to try to ride him out here and gain that point. And... Uh, but he did get the riding time down to there's no advantage. Either wrestler, we're approaching a minute left in regulation. And right now, Mark Hall with a familiar one-point lead. It's been that way in their three mat previous matchups. So what does Amin try to do to go ahead and, you know, he's gonna come, he's got a, he's a competitor. He's not gonna just sit out there in space and let the clock kick, tick, tick down, so he's, Nice work by Hall. I, I really like that. At that at 45 seconds left, go out to go get some of your own offense out there, and, and, and maybe that works. But I'll go pass to the far leg. 35 seconds left in regulation. I mean, trying to break through Hall's defense. Very tough to penetrate. That's action, gentlemen. Nittany Lions got a champion at 157, and then Iowa got a champion at 165, upsetting the two-time NCAA champion Vincenzo Joseph. We say an upset, the only two times they've met. Marinelli's had the key to unlock that door and win both matchups. Paul trying to get another win for the Lions, and there's a mean in on the shot. Can he finish it in short time? If he does, he would have a win. Can he get the two? It's down close. Can he drive through? Whoa! Yep. It's, again, you get to that leg, you're only one third through the battle. And Hall, once again, showing great balance, great effort by Amin in that match here. Another one point decision, Tim, as you mentioned, between these two guys. I think they'll see each other again. Great battle, and your winner, Mark Hall. Mark Hall winning another. Take a look at that slide by. Almost gets the leg lace right there. He drops back in on the low shot. And watch the work he does with his lower body right now. Once he senses his ankles are in danger, he moves out a little bit. Moves out, gets it in motion, switches back in. Here's that last takedown effort by Amin. Tried the limp arm right there, but good work. And notice how Hall is pushing back into his opponent to keep his balance. And it was a rematch, and Mark Hall, for the second year in a row, beats Miles Amin in the finals of the Big Ten, and Shane is with the champ. All right, Mark, another great battle with you and the Wolverine. You've been on these big stages and big matches. What motivates you? You're the guy that everybody's gunning for. What keeps you inspired? Uh, just gotta wrestle hard. Um, I like the target on my back. Just being, being a top guy my whole life with the group that I've been with, people in my class, the guys I wrestle with every day, you know, like that's what we're wrestling for. Wrestling to have fun, you know, be the top dog and stay up there because that's what keeps us motivated. You look at your career, you've had success at all levels, the state level, the national level, the world level. What is the biggest threat to your success? Myself. Uh, there's no one that can uh, keep me from doing what I want to do unless I don't have the right mindset going into it. I keep a clear head. I uh, train smart, train hard, wrestle hard. Um, there should be, uh, you know, no one that can, 
you know, keep me from accomplishing my goals. I'm my biggest enemy, but at the same time, I'm my biggest asset. I just gotta wrestle hard and wrestle smart all the time. Congratulations, Mark. I got, uh, I got one more thing, I got one more thing. Um, so, with uh, Full Wrestling, I told them uh, they, they would donate $400 to Thon, and I would donate 100 if I brought out my recorder that I played for some uh, silly documentary they did for me, so here it is. <laughs> the stage is yours. I'll play, I'll play a little tune. We'll play some uh, hot cross buns. <laughs> Boo? All right, they say no. Oh, no, we want it, Mark. We're begging you. I'm asking you, can you do it for me? Can you play the recorder? An interview that will rival the mullet interview of Sammy Brooks, Mark Hall. This time these guys met, it came down to this, an early pin for Bo Nickel over number two ranked Colin Moore. And they're gonna go at it again today for the Big Ten Wrestling Championships. Number one and number two, not only in this seating in this meet, but in the country, only one loss on the, the year so far for Colin Moore, you just saw it, so. Hard to recreate, Tim, the looks that Bo Nickel will give you. Prolific tenor, look at that, 15 falls on the season, 24-0. Colin Moore, a two-time Big Ten champion. A disappointing uh, uh, big uh, NCAAs last year, finishing fourth uh, as, the, as the top seed, but uh, he's trying to become a three-timer. Bo Nickel looking to be a three-time NCAA champion. They're both Big Ten champions. You know, in order for Colin Moore to succeed in this match, that, that last match has to be totally out of his mind, all right? You need to be respectful of what Bo has to offer. He's a special pinner, and there's not anybody that we've seen in a while that once he gets the pinning combination on, he just, he's, he's just rabid with it. He just has that sixth sense. He has that feeling for it. Guy out there stays loose. So Bo Nickel, Penn State, won last year's Big Ten Championship at 184. He moves up to 197, and he's going up against the two-time defending Big Ten champion Colin Moore for Ohio State. So it'll be interesting for me to see what the adjustments are here with the Ohio State coaching staff, what they've asked uh, Moore to do and how they're going to approach this puzzle of Bo Nickel because you just can't sit back on him and just stay away from the upper body stuff because he will attack your legs. He can go biggest improvement, I think, in his style since he's really hit the scene has been his ability to attack below the knee. Nickel, so. no problem getting to the finals. He had a technical fall and he had a major decision. Moore also with a major decision in uh, the quarters and a 5-2 victory over Warner from Iowa in the semis. A couple of really nice snaps there by Nickel. Colin Moore out of Burbank, Ohio, Norwayne High School. He's their first ever state champion. Two-time All-American, a redshirt junior. As right. I mentioned, a two-time Big Ten champ. Right now, you can see how that left elbow of Moore is kind of tucked in right there. The one who reached too much. Made some sort of decision about that. He seems to be tucking that in just a little bit more than what you normally see. Keeping that right hand floated out there. It's coming back. Bo Nickel out of Allen, Texas. Allen High School. He is a three-time state champion and runner-up. And he led his team to state championships every year. Coached by his dad, Jason. Well, he's just so instinctive, too, Bo Nickel is, is that you attack those hips. He's got that, it's like a judo background where he can go with double overs. And you can see that, 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 you know, rightly so, Colin Moore has been a little bit more cautious right now. You've got to really pick your spots. A contrast in styles here, Jim, but just like we talked about Nolf, as wild and free as Bo Nickel is, 
he doesn't get out of position often. Now, you see that these all these champions in the right time, they're not pushing in and leaning in against their opponents. They're, they've got, they, they can keep their own balance. Now, a nice low shot right there. Nickel going after, scoops the bottom leg. Looks like he's going to be able to score pretty easily here. But again, that, that's, the, that's the difference. When you have guys that, that know you can go upper body and all that, but then you can go out there and create your own offense because they push away from you, that's a quantum leap, and that's what's made him the prolific scorer out there he's been here the last two years. And I remember when you talked about the first time you really saw that effect, it was against Gabe Dean, the two-time NCAA champion, sure. and he shot below the knee so effectively when everybody was looking for up above. Yeah, and, and not a lot of people gave Bo a, you know, a, a, a fighting chance in that match going against the two-time national champion. So this, again, going against the guy who was looking for his third title, and Gabe Dean goes out there and gets the first takedown. And Bo answered it with a low takedown of his own and, and, and beat him in a totally different style. It just tells you, you know, how good he potentially can be, not only at this level, but the next level. Already a minute, approaching a minute of riding time for Mo Nickel, that early takedown as we approach the end of the first period. Nickel out front 2-0, but already much different than the last time they met. Yeah. Watch the cross up right here coming across the body. There's a low shot. And then being able to get the right arm above the knee right there. Do you see how he got the right arm above the knee when he did that? That almost eliminated Moore's ability to go ahead and scramble off that. And a happy. There's a high five from Sandy, his mom, to Jason Nolf. And there's Jason, his uh, dad, Jason Nickel. Mom and dad, Jason and Sandy, both college athletes. And uh, they are uh, excited for their son's opportunity and a little high five for the other champion that nittany lion jason nolf sitting behind him yeah and there's a nice little duck under he's got it to the that's the respect to those hips and he comes back down again below the knee that was good action and, and you know if, if you're more you've got to pick your poison do i want to go ahead and battle with those hips or do i want to get out of that position and immediately felt the you know, the, the, the gap right there, he came right back in it. So more, really, I, I love the duck and I love that action right there, but Nickel has great feel. And already a stalling call then on Colin Moore there, but Colin Moore has been an attack machine all year. I don't he, understand that call. He either. just got done taking a shot, right? <laughs> Come on. There they are, Sandy on the left and Jason on the right there. Sandy just giving a good clap there. And uh, they've watched a, a lot of exciting uh, matches with their son since he was young. And none more exciting than what he has done in his four-year career. These guys that are seniors have never lost a duel meet. Four straight seasons as undefeated. 59 straight duel meets wins for the senior class led by Jason Nolf and Bo Nickel. And you normally don't see this type of indecision with, with, with Colin Moore out there, but where do you go? And it's just, you know, I lay my hands on him and, and see what happens next. And just, he's just totally off balance right now. I decided to work, Morris decided to work from space, but eventually I think you just got to go ahead and, you know, this is what I do, go after it. Now there's a little snap down, work there with that near side cradle that you saw with a snap down. That's what got him, uh, uh, the pinning combination he got into last time. Our Cliff Keen outstanding wrestler is Alex Marinelli, defeating the two time NCAA champion, Vincenzo Joseph, the big move. He's our Cliff Keen outstanding wrestler. Cliff Keen, built for life. Good there, work there by Moore getting to his feet, getting the quick escape. Uh, here's, the, here's the point in the match where if you're, you're nickel, you kind of go back after him because you know you've got, got that doubt. And if you're Moore, if you can conjure up just the, the, the emotion and the energy of, of Hey, I'm going to go for it, right? I'm going to. I have to learn something here in this match right now, or else I got no shot. Oh, 
See, just even in more reaching for the head. I mean, Nichols not there. His motion is good. More. What a career he's had so far. The top winning percentage, over 900 of all active wrestlers on the program. Five, five, five. But Nickel, just too much. Workmanlike from every direction. Bo Nickel, another takedown. Out front, nine to two now with a minute left. Looking for more. And he's not doing this to just anybody. He's doing it to last year's number one seed in the country. Tight waist ride there. And we're looking at yep. Bo Nichols' top test right now. I mean, uh, there's no, there's yeah. no uh, more uh, test as far as, uh, uh, on, on Bo as far as a wrestler and Colin Moore. And this is just what uh, Bo Nichols has been able to do. Moving up from 84 to 197. Some people question that. No questions anymore. No questions, yeah. He's been able to do it physically and also been able to do everything he's been able to do at the lower weight class at the higher weight class and, and, and you could make a case he's done it better and the big question obviously for wrestling fans is will he contend for 2020 uh, for the olympic team and uh, it's certainly a great question and certainly the trajectory possibility for the champion uh, bo nickel another big 10 championship for bo nickel and the first time that uh, Colin Moore's been in the finals and not won. He won as a freshman and a sophomore. He leaves as a runner-up this year because of that man, Bo Nickel. Big Ten champion for the Nittany Lions. Take a look at that effort right there. Bottom leg scoop right there. Getting the head across. Nice takedown. You know, you never know what's going to happen in, in two weeks, right? But, but you, you, there's... Bo Nickel is walking into that national tournament with a lot of momentum. We're waiting on heavyweights here, and you can see peeked out to the right there, there's Anthony Kassar. And uh, I've been looking forward to this one. I know you have too, because Anthony Kassar, quite a, uh, a story himself. Penn State last year at 197 and was not chosen to be their varsity wrestler to go on to the Big Tens at 197. And he started right then, and he's probably at about 250 now. And he's going to go up against Gable Stevenson, a senior versus a freshman. Every time you lay eyes on Anthony Kassar, he looks like he's five pounds bigger, right? And so he's working himself into that weight. And he's got the type of style, likes to attack with the left left arm lead, he'll attack the left leg, um, you know, pretty well. So he's gotten better and better once he's gotten used to the, the, the big power guys right there. So again, Stevenson is not only a power guy, but also has the speed that Kassar has, but he's a good style matchup for uh, uh, Stevenson because he's got the ability to go ahead and shoot that left-handed high crotch. There's Anthony Kassar coming out of the him. tunnel with the other heavyweights. <laughs> and uh, he's no 197 pounder anymore, <laughs> more, Jim. <laughs> Looking good. And there's his opponent behind him. Coming on, Gable Stevenson. He's the top seed. He's undefeated. But it's a big crowd. And this is what they've been waiting for all day. The partisan Gopher fans here. And they have been a great. They're always knowledgeable and follow the team with a lot of faithfulness. Wearing that traditional gold singlet there. You see how they got here. Pretty dominant performance by both of them. Take a look at that early win by Stevenson over Sam Stoll, the eighth seed right there from Iowa. The guy's been an All-American. But, you know, talk about builds. Uh, you talk about power and the ability to go ahead and, and uh, good footwork. That's Gable Stevenson here. He's really moves well. Here we go. What you would believe is the top test of the year for the undefeated true freshman who was in high school last year, finishing up his career, dreaming of this moment right here. Step at a time. There's Kassar in, but the hips of Stevenson keeps him from finishing. Right there, good test for both guys on their defense. Haven't seen it as much, but Gable Stevenson likes to hit that little swing single right there. All right. Little ankle pick. Last Big Ten champion for Minnesota. He also, Chris Dardanes in 2015. Excuse me, Tim, but he also likes to work off the underhook right on the left-hand side, and, and naturally, Kassar keeps that right leg back, okay? So that's kind of the side that he likes to attack to. So he just, it's going to be difficult for him to get to it. So sometimes, you know, when you see situations like this, the guy's not as comfortable 
So he's got to move him around a little bit to get worked ahead to get to that left handed underhook and then Stevenson's offense really starts to open up from there. For Kassar, he wants to attack the left leg of, of Stevenson. He wants to get to it and finish it. And he, what he's been doing a better and better job of is attacking at angles, so it's almost effortless. He's lifting guys, but not going against their power. Stevenson trying to become not only a Big Ten title, but his uh, his sights are set on an NCAA title, and the last one to do it for the Gophers, a heavyweight, Tony Nelson, a while ago, 2013. Well, Gable couldn't have uh, walked into a better pr tradition than the Minnesota heavyweights, <laughs> you know. And with Tony in the room, yeah, yeah. working out, a uh, contender at the uh, international level, and so what a great opportunity. Anthony Kassar out of Rocky Hill, New Jersey, one of six New Jerseyans in the finals. He's Montgomery High School, senior eligibility-wise. Whether or not he'll get an extra year or not is still, uh, we don't know, but he certainly could because he had two full years, practically, of being injured and not competing. You, know, you take a look at Anthony at this weight class, you go, why didn't we think of this earlier? Well, you, you get, had Nick Nevels, you know? So here's a guy that's beaten an all-American. All beaten an all-American off of the team and is moving up. Not much action. Again, I think it's just a style from their, their stance styles. You can't really see or get to their shot right now. Well, the end of the first period will be scoreless, and so let's go to Shane, who has more about both of these wrestlers. TJ, they've both taken very different paths in getting to this championship final. Stevenson, of course, as you said, the true freshman phenom, a four-time state champion in high school. He's a multiple-time world champion. Then you have Kassar. He qualified for the New Jersey State Championship just one time. That was as a senior. He won it. He comes to Penn State. He redshirts. Misses a couple of years due to injury. Of course, last year he's down at 197. Had that big win against more of Ohio State, but ultimately Penn State went with Shakur Rashid in postseason. So what does he do? He puts on 25, 30 pounds to go up to heavyweight, where Neville's a two-time All-American was awaiting. So just phenomenal resiliency from Kassar. I know it's an anticipated battle here in the second period. Good insight, Shane. Thanks for that. And like Jim, like you said, I go, think those 25 or 30 have become uh, closer to 40 or 45. He puts on five pounds every yeah. month. Uh, we're talking about Anthony Kassar and his journey from being the 197 pounder last year to the heavyweight. That's uh, the top uh, test for Gable Stevenson. And we're talking about a true freshman and uh, undefeated here for the Gophers. And the Gopher fans are pretty excited for these next, these four years with Gable Stevenson anchoring the program for Brandon Egham, well, the head coach. They, I think the fans would be a little excited, more excited if the, the, the guys found a way to their offense, but so it's a lot of little hand fighting and Stop. then they break free. Show me. Angel Rivera, guys, the officials saw a hand clasp there. It's gonna message. give them a warning. Again, neither guy not really getting at it. That, now, there's a left leg lead there by Stevenson. Can, can Kassar get to it? It, it just, I wouldn't say both guys seem like they're disinterested, but they're definitely disinterested in attacking below the waist right now. Looking in the corner, and you see that Anthony Kassar has an Olympic champion in the corner. Jake Varner, assistant coach, along with Kale Sanderson. Jake Varner, the uh, Olympic champion who is now part of that coaching staff, certainly adds a lot to Kassar's development as a heavyweight. Green choice. Now, one of the things about, and I've been impressed, kind of like the same thing when Mark Hall burst on the scene, that, that uh, Gable is really tough in the top position. He's really improved there as well. So this is going to be work here for Kassar. He gets the quick escape. So, so it's 1-1. One, one. What do I know? Yeah, and so the undefeated Gable Stevenson over the, uh, or tied with the once defeated Anthony Kassar, his only loss of the year to Derek White from Oklahoma State. 
three to two in the uh, in the scuffle, the Southern scuffle. Yeah, now, see, that's the first time he's able to get to that left-handed underhook right there. Now warning against Kassar as the underhook forces, by Stevenson forces Kassar off the mark. Now he's coming back to it, that left-handed underhook. You see how Kassar is working his head back in. Now he gets that side right there. Look at this mat return. Boom. <laughs> wow, textbook. Low, sweeping single, comes to his feet, lifts Kassar, gets the two point out in front now, three to two. He's made a statement, Jim. Yeah, he did. He did right there, when you see that power pack lower body right there, you weren't, any, you weren't worried to whether he's gonna be able to lift Kassar off the mat, but, but you see how he set that up? Collar tie, underhook, and then when, when Kassar was leaning back into him, he hit that little duck shot right there. You know, what impresses me about Gable Stevenson is he can attack three fourths. If you build the body into four quadrants, he can go left side high with that underhook, left side low, and he can go the other side here. So he's got almost three of those quadrants covered with technique that will work on about anybody. Wow, shot there. Good work. Good job. First and two. Yeah. And he goes ahead go for a short time. Yep. Wow, Kassar fights through and gets a two for a takedown and goes ahead and four to three. Now, Kassar is good enough in the top position that he can go ahead and expect him to drop on those ankles. Hold, set, top. Oh, good spiral ride, changes over the right-hand side. Remember, yeah. there is a stall warning against Kassar. Yeah, good job of the two night cast over the top side. No points. Short time. Drops in on the leg. Wow. Oh. Anthony Kassar stuns. Bringing him back in. Got a little blood there. Two seconds left on the clock. Anthony Kassar stunning the undefeated freshman Gable Stevenson with this late takedown. Yeah, great straight on double leg right into power, but you know he got below the knees on it. Take a look at it. You can look at the Kassar take the drops back in, look at the big step up, and then gets to the single leg and drops back there, leans him back. Kept well, driving, didn't yeah. he? Well, yeah, he, he went for a double. We've seen that before with the lightweights where they shoot the double, they end up with the single. Excellent finish. And you make a great point there, because Kassar, if they're as a heavyweight, wrestles like a lightweight. Both these guys do, but they, they, you're, you're, you're right, Tim. In that instance, it was just, you know, straight on double leg. Don't get on you yet. Know, one of those legs are going to come Set, back because you can't just sprawl back and get to the trailing leg. And Big that's win. it. Two heavyweights, they clash. And they waited a while, but that third period was wild. And Anthony Kassar steps up, takes the heavyweight position for the Nittany Lions, and wins his first Big Ten championship. Well done. Take a look at that takedown again. Straight on double leg. And he steps up and hits that single leg and comes back into that little uh, finish where he brings his head back into him. and. Nothing Gable Stevens can do about that beautiful finish. Well done. Great execution by Kassar, and Shane is standing there with the champ. Well, you said it, TJ. His mouth guard says it, champ. You are a Big Ten champion, a stacked heavyweight class. What are you most proud of, especially slaying the giant to win the title? Just being consistent and gratitude. You know, I haven't been able to put this Penn State single on and wrestle in the Big Tens or Nationals. And that's been hard. You know, I've been close numerous times. I was able to do it today, so I was just grateful to God. And it's disrespectful to him and everyone who supports me if I don't get my best out here. So that's what I did. Talked about it during the match, and you and I have talked about on, on occasion the resiliency that you've had. What is most satisfying in getting this title? Just consistency. You know, I, I know that over the past five years, I've worked harder and more committed than anyone. And I want it more than anyone, so out here, I don't have to think much. I can just rely on that training and that preparation. That's what I did. Congratulations, Anthony. See you.